Hey everyone, thank you for being here on the Pink Cloud Nine podcast, True Crime. Today we have a special story. And um, I don't know if y'all remember this, but a few years ago, the story of the one and the only Tamla Horsford came onto the news. And I definitely remember, uh, I mean, Inside Edition, uh, like, you know, all kinds of like story places. Rolling Stone did an article. Anywho, um, if you don't remember the story, that's fine. We're going to uh, talk about it tonight. Michelle Graves is here, and Michelle Graves was one of Tamla's best friends. And so Michelle uh, has been close to Tamla, has been close to her family. Tamla had five children. I want to know how they're doing now, you know, things like that. Like if you can, you know, whatever, if not, I totally get it. <laughs> but Michelle, thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much for talking about this. And please don't forget to mention to us about the uh, documentary style book that you wrote about this case. And so thank you so much for being here, Michelle. What would you like to start off by saying about Tamla? Um, well, she was a wonderful woman. Um, she was a wonderful friend, a wonderful mother. Um, she was a wonderful mother, even to my own children. Um, we lived on the same street. Um, that's how I met her was through my children, actually, who became friends with her kids. Um, so, um, yeah, we just immediately became friends as soon as we met and, um, spent the next four years, probably, I mean, every day you know, taking our kids to do things. Uh, she and I, you know, going out, going to, you know, our, all of our kids' events. I mean, pretty much everything surrounded, you know, our children's activities. Um, wow. For the most part, so. And, but okay. her kids played, okay. her boys played football. Mine played, my kids played soccer. So, um, you know, she would come to my kids' games. I'd go to her kids' games, so. And if I seem peppy, it's not, it's because I just am used to having, trying to have a sunny disposition. Oh, and I sure. know that it's weird yeah. in these like true crime situations. Um, but I won't be just the, I just want to, I want people to um, know Tamla's, you know, life, uh, celebration of her life yeah. as well, right? You know, so. She's a, a great mother, and she was even a great mother to your kids. And you yes. know, I mean, that's that's saying a lot about about yes. that, you know? So yes. I appreciate. That. Um, and so the 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 her children, uh, one of her child, one of her children was um, on the football team. Right? right. Two of her boys were on the football team. Her middle kids were on the football team. Right. And so let's get to the story about like what kind of what happened that night. That way the viewers can kind of have an idea. Um, so I, I was not at the party because I didn't associate with those people because, um, well, really, Tammy didn't either. She um, she had only met Jean, the homeowner, uh, three months before the incident occurred um, at football practice. So, um, yeah. So she didn't really know these people either. Um AC and Tom, who were at the party, she did know. She'd known them for a few years, um, probably as long as she had known myself. Um, but everybody else there were just John's friends that she had invited, um, which she knew through cheer. Tammy didn't have any girls, so she wasn't part of that little close-knit community either. So, um, so yeah, she, you know, she only knew essentially one couple there and then had only known the homeowner for a few months, so... Those weren't really her her friends per se. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So this is something that the media doesn't talk about. What What do you believe was her reason to go into this uh, slumber party sleepover adult um, sleepover? It's called. Sleep. Um, I think because she just didn't want to seem rude not going um, because they did invite her. So um, that's how Tammy was. So she wouldn't want them to think like. Or maybe because of, you know, who she was that maybe they, you know, she didn't want to, I know how she was. And I know that, yeah, she went because, you know, they invited her. I know that day I spoke with her that day. I hung out with her that day before at like three in the afternoon before she went to the party. Um, her intention was not to spend the night. Um, 
she said she figured she would come home because she didn't want to be away from her children. She never spent the night out anywhere ever. So, um, mm. you know, so yeah. So uh, to hear that she had mentioned that she wanted to come home and they wouldn't let her leave and all that is not surprising to me because I'm, I know she didn't want to stay. It's not like her, you know, to have wanted to really stay anyway. Let's go back to what you just said. They didn't want to let her leave. Who is they and what does that mean? Um, well, in the beginning, Jean and Jose had said that she wanted to leave and they didn't want her to drive. They didn't want her to leave. Um, but then after reading through the GBI interviews and all of that, it was Tom and Stacy say they didn't want her to leave. And then Bridget said she didn't want her to leave. Um, uh, you know, so again, you have all these stories, but if Tammy wanted to leave, Tammy would have left um, 100%. She could have called somebody. She could, So there's a reason that she was not allowed the privilege to, to leave, in right. my opinion. Right. Okay. <laughs> So let's get to the to the the bottom line here. The police ruled it as an accident. What happened that night? Is that right. is that accurate? Right. Okay. Her family and her friends believe what, including you, because you're. Oh, yeah, that it. Um, maybe something started out as an accident, but I don't believe. I mean, just the fact that nobody called EMS, nobody rolled her over. Nobody checked her pulse. They canceled her ambulance. Nobody wanted this woman to be able to tell her story clearly. Um, in my opinion, they had to provide some sort of medical care or at least make it look like they attempted some sort of, you know, attempt to save her life. Um, mm -hmm. Just the, in all the stories that came out, you know, she fell down the stairs. She tripped over a garden border. She fell off the balcony. She, you know, I mean, just so many stories. Just, yeah. Right. And so that that is like the what is in the media, in the articles that she fell down this balcony. And that was that was their story. The big story that was fed to people. Um, but. I did read about the report of the autopsy that said she actually had, was it like abrasions or like small cuts, like on her legs and her arms? And she, didn't she there were, like there were, oh no, there were abrasions on the outside of her arms. There were abrasions between her thighs. There were, you know, cuts, visibly holes, like a hole in her shin, um, a scrap, like an indention where there was like a scrape where like the skin was peeled up and the back of her other opposite leg, um, her shin, um, you know, her nose was broken. Um, there was a clear indention in the side of her head from some sort of instrument or something that, that poked her, um, you know, the wrist that was a compound fracture, um, with no blood that's, post-mortem believed to be post-mortem there was no blood no um you know um the the medical examiner first they said that she died from the broken neck from falling off the balcony but then when the gbi did their investigation or they call an investigation um they uh the medical examiner the chief medical examiner actually um said that actually she did not have a broken neck now he took that back off of the autopsy two years later amazing really <laughs> it is it's it's, it's right. no comment right there right <laughs> yeah i did read that there was a piercing in her heart is that accurate there are some well some they had tried to say that her heart was lacerated but i don't believe that because she died it took i mean she didn't die according to the um death certificate she didn't die till 10 47 a.m so Oh, wow. What could, so, but did she have a laceration in her heart? I mean, what could have caused I, that? I, I don't believe so because she would have died much quicker, obviously, oh, yeah, if yeah, she yeah, had yeah, a lacerated okay, heart. Okay. And yeah, she okay. wasn't blue or purple in the pictures at the scene. I mean, she, her coloring was fine. Um, she has bubbles and drool coming out of her mouth and her nose. So there's clearly air there. So um, I have my own theory on, you know, what went on yes. in, uh, at the scene. 
<laughs> and when I read that, that that about the heart, I was like, well, wouldn't she have like an outside uh, wound if there was like, it, no, nobody talked about the outside like wound. trauma to her chest, broken rib. There would have been a broken rib, I would imagine, if you hit your chest hard enough. Because to pierce, to lacerate the heart, there usually it's because a rib, a broken rib slices it, you know. it Right. From a medical standpoint, a, a rib, something has to puncture your heart like that, you know, to get it lacerated, or it has to be some serious trauma, um, mm -hmm. blunt force trauma, um, which they said she did experience multiple blunt force trauma, which is an, also, in my opinion, kind of impossible from one little, one fall straight to the ground. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to ask you, what do you think is the motive behind what happened and how did all this occur? What? could possibly be like the reason the why the because i don't i have different theories i part of me wants i i think that it was set up part of me thinks that she was invited there on purpose um because it's clear that nobody liked her at the party from the way they've spoken about her since her death um i know that the uh you know one of the gentlemen there, even in his um, interview, commented about how he didn't like the bullhorn at the games that she would, you know, yell in about her boys um, at the field and at practice and things like that. Um, I know Jose had been asking all week who was coming to this party. Um, I find that strange since he says he wasn't supposed to be there. Um, he wasn't going to decided that night to be there. So why would you ask who was coming? Um the fact that she's dead, I just, <laughs> I, I just, I find it very odd that, I mean, they clearly didn't, you know, we're not her friends. Um, and the fact that Jean picked just a small group of her closest friends to be at this gathering, but then you invited Tam, who you only knew for three short months and didn't know any of your other friends, wasn't part of that cheer community or whatever. So I, I, Part of me thinks, you know, why did you invite her? Like, was it, you know, was it intentional? You didn't like her? Um, because Tammy was an outspoken, you know, she walked into a room, you knew she was there, uh, not in an obnoxious way, but in a, just a very, she had a very bright, just energy about her. You know, she talked to anybody and everybody. She just, you know, she was a very happy, outgoing person. Um, so, so there's that, there's that, <laughs> you know, like why, you know, what the way that they have spoken about her and the horrible things that they've said, it just makes you wonder why would you want this person at your intimate gathering, you know, for your special so birthday. True. So true because but, like, it, go ahead. But then at the other time, you know, I don't, I think maybe something got out of hand. I think maybe there was a, a verbal altercation. Um, somebody maybe got jealous, somebody, something happened and, and, um, and it and you know something ensued from there that was unexpected um you know because there's several people unaccounted for you know jose says he left to go get his phone charger um michael Pallarino can't be found the whole evening his wife was trying to get in touch with him um he he didn't see her message till six in the morning uh you know then john says later on that oh jose went to go get his phone and he came back really quick quicker than expected um and then we were having sex like why would you even go there in a uh, i feel like you're making an alibi for him for his being gone in my opinion because <laughs> that was never mentioned or brought up in the police investigation the first you know two days week into the investigation so all this came out a year and a half later so um yeah. You know, there's just a lot of um, questionable, questionable things. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to what you said at the beginning of this section. Okay, when I look at this picture here, oh, let me, when I look at that picture, I think, oh my gosh, they look like BFFs forever, you know? Right. It's telling me they've only really known each other for like the owners of the house and Tamla knew each other for like three months or so, right? Right. Right, and then and then they were not close. These these the other girls, girls were close, but just not with Tam. Correct. the 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 right. other girls were close with each other, but Tam right. was somewhat of a an outsider of the group. Right? right. Right. So she had no allies really at that party that night. Clearly. <laughs> okay. Right. Ooh, that's so. 
Okay, well, I thank you so much for being here. Uh, please tell us the name of uh, the book and also. Um, um. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, no. So the book is called Search for the Truth, um, Black Woman Failed by the State of Georgia. Um, pretty much everything you could want to know about the, um, you know, story is in there, not just what they did, um, you know, their story, but what they did to me when I, you know, kind of stuck up for her and started um, saying, you know, questioning like this, none of this makes sense. Um, you know, there's all kinds of things about the history of Forsyth County, um, the information about the investigators that were um, involved that were in their own like sex scandal, um, you know, the lead investigator. So all of that is in the book um, mm. as well. So that's great. <laughs> the uh, link to your book uh, that you wrote um, concerning Tamla's case, right. death in case uh open uh, is it considered a cold case is it considered open case what is well it? no they just considered it closed because they just the the district attorney said she doesn't see even after all the information that came out in the gbi investigation she said that she doesn't see any any need to prosecute mm. so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the link to the book is in the description if anybody wants to read it uh you know, it's on Amazon. You can read the summary of it. You can look at the pictures. You can, you know, get more information. Um, so sorry for your loss. It's it must be so thank you for 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 obviously her children, but also your children, you, your family, the neighborhood, the community. Tell me about how are her children doing today? How are your children doing today? Um, I mean, I can't speak for her children, but I know, um, I, I know it's been a struggle, obviously, to lose your mother, um, especially her baby, you know, her Mason was only four years old. So, um, that was rough. Um, you know, uh, my children, they still grieve her. She was very close with my kids, um, cause I have two daughters and since Tam didn't have any girls, you know, she really kind of was very, you know, protective and looked out for my girls and, um, you know, just enjoyed having them around with the boys. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it's affected all of us. We were all very close. We were together every day. So for five years, so. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Is there anything else that you would like to mention about the, the this case uh, that should really be mentioned? Um, otherwise, we'll just wrap it up. But you have the floor and you can say whatever you want. Um, just to share it, um, get her story out there as much as you can to keep putting pressure on the media um, and not just the media, but the authorities. It is um, supposedly with the FBI. I did, you know, get it. It took me three tries to get it to the Department of Justice for them to do something. Um, and last I was told that they did send it to the um, FBI in Atlanta. So obviously they're not going to tell me if they're doing anything, but um even the judge during the defamation case that they finally dismissed against me after four years, they, um, the judge also was inquiring, you know, with the FBI about where we stand in this case. So I have written to them again and um, I didn't get a, a response, but I was told um, by people that if they haven't written a letter saying they're just not going to do it and it's closed and whatnot, then um, that's a good sign. So we'll see if yeah. it goes or not, but also, even if I think even if I don't know, though, but if they decide to close it, you can anybody can reopen it again later. Right. I mean, isn't that. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think once the is it, it's probably closed. I don't know. But they haven't, to my knowledge, there's never been any correspondence to me saying that they have. So hopefully, you know, there's definitely hope. Right. <laughs> so the I'm more people who can share this and get the story out there, you know, to put the pressure on them would be great. Correct. Okay. So I said I wasn't going to do this, but here we are. And I feel very moved. You haven't mentioned it, but I'm going to. Okay. Was there some kind of uh, racial um, thing going on here? Do you believe, or was it just a person to person not liking each other or was it racially inclined in any way? Do you think? Um, you don't have to answer. It's just, yeah. Question. Um, I mean, it's hard to say, it's hard to say if 
if there was an argument that ensued and it was, you know, there was a fight, I, you know, they were playing cards against humanity. You can hear in the video, um, they were being rude to her, kind of egging her on, telling her to hurry up, take her turn when she was on the phone with her stepdaughter, worried about her son. Um, you can hear that in the audio. So um, there could have been a, an exchange of words, you know, there afterwards. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I it's don't hard know. To say, right? It's hard to what say. What happened? Yeah. Right. But all I know is that she's deceased and they're not. Yes. And she was black and nobody else was. And we know for Scythe County, historically, um, I think if she would have been white and they were all white, it would have been handled differently for sure. Thank you. <laughs> so. for saying that. Thank you for saying that because you, you, you know, you live there, you've no. seen, you, right. that's like, you, you, you've seen the history. You right. Oh, I lived it. I, I was white and they came after me for sticking up for her. So, I mean, I, I, yeah. And she knew how it was there. That's why she was so involved with her children, volunteered at the school, was there every day doing everything, you know, had her kids in every sport. She wanted to make sure, you know, that she wasn't afraid, but she knew where she was, um, which sadly, ultimately, you know, did wind up taking her life. So, um, however, but yeah, so I, you know, it's hard to say if it was definitely, if it was racially motivated or not, but I just know that it was definitely not handled the way I believe, in my opinion, law enforcement would have handled it. Had she not been, a, she wasn't a U.S. citizen. She was from the island, you know, St. Vincent. She, you know, so I just think, you know, they weren't going to let that ruin the reputation of their hardworking upper class white people in their community, in my opinion. <laughs> So, yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Totally, totally, totally. I'm glad I, I'm glad I asked and I'm glad you uh, you answered right. <laughs> and, and with courage. And I appreciate yeah. you being here. Uh, Michelle well, Graves. You you. And, um, everybody else, please check out Michelle Graves book on uh, on this case. Uh, it's a document style about Tamla Horsford. Uh, case, death, and case. Uh, sorry if I, I mispronounce her name. I'm terrible at names, but I remember her beautiful okay. face always. Thank you yes. so much for being here, and thank you everybody thank for watching you. and listening. Please share the story so that we can get to the bottom of this case. Bye. Thank you so much. <laughs> mm -hmm.